Last Saturday on the podcast, we were discussing the upcoming D-Generation X 25th anniversary celebration that will be taking place on Raw on October 10th from Barclays Center in Brooklyn. And we were speculating about the possibility of Billy Gunn being involved in this. Now, my intent was to crop out that portion of the podcast and upload it as a mic drop. But while I was talking about that, there was a crazy reflection coming through the room here that was shining a light on my face. And it just looked really terrible. So when I was trying to put together the video, I'm like, this just does not look right. So I'm going to record for you guys an exclusive mic drop, a new look mic drop, by the way. What do you think? And kind of re- record these thoughts on Billy Gunn and how cool I think it would be if he was able to be a part of the DX reunion next Monday on Raw. Now, at the end of the day, this is not a big deal. This is going to be a small segment on what I believe is going to be the season premiere of Monday Night Raw. So it's going to be a nostalgia segment. They're not going to be shooting any angles or do anything too crazy here. So if Billy Gunn can't be involved in this thing, not the end of the world, right? But this is something that I've spoken about before. As a matter of fact, there's another mic drop on my channel where I talked about the possibility of AEW and WWE coming together for a really small arrangement to give back to the fans, some of which who actually don't require the compulsive need to hate one company and love the other. Some fans are just fans of wrestling, and I thought it would be really cool if maybe Tony Khan and Triple H could have a phone call or have his people call his people and maybe work together in some small arrangement to give the fans something entertaining. And I had pitched the idea of perhaps sending our truth to Dynamite for one night in exchange for Danhausen on Raw for one night with no explanation. Both guys just make random cameos backstage with no explanation the fans can shit themselves over it and be like wow that was so cool and the next week both guys are back on the respective shows you could just have our truth forgetting which company he works for and showing up at AEW instead of going to Raw and then who knows Dan Housen could have just cursed or teleported himself to Raw and just give the fans something to chuckle about it's no big deal it's not like you're sending Roman to Dynamite and Hangman Page to Raw it's two small characters small parts of the show that are a fun part of the show and having them cross over could be beneficial I think for the fans and for the wrestling companies because it would just be fun and we've seen WWE and AEW kind of already work together in the past because Billy Gunn was did the Hall of Fame when he first signed with AEW even though AEW hadn't launched yet and just a few months ago for John Cena's 20th celebration on Raw we saw taped messages from Chris Jericho from Brian Danielson from Big Show and that was really great to see back in the day when WWE wanted Ric Flair for the Four Horsemen Hall of Fame, they worked something out with TNA, a company that they weren't on great terms with, but they still worked something out by sending Christian to TNA for one night in exchange for Flair at the Hall of Fame. These things have been done before, and I don't think it's really that far-fetched to think that something like this couldn't be worked out for Billy Gunn because Billy Gunn is a veteran in the business. I think once you've been around for 30 plus years, you might get some preferential treatment here and there. Another major example that I left out was Chris Jericho on Broken Skull Sessions. So given the fact that we've already seen all of these things done with these two companies, it shouldn't be that far-fetched to think that Billy Gunn could actually be on Raw for the DX celebration because... Billy Gunn, even though he is associated with the acclaimed now, and that is very over, Billy Gunn, up until this point, has not been a humongous part of the show. So maybe there is some hesitation on WWE's part, knowing that Billy Gunn is involved in a very over angle with a couple of champions in the other company, that you could get some scissor me daddy ass chance during the celebration, which of course WWE probably would not want. So maybe it's not possible for Billy to be there just given how over the acclaimed and the act is. So it's very possible that these two companies aren't going to be able to work out an agreement for Billy Gunn, which I understand, but I still think you could make it happen in exchange for something else. I think a really nice idea that WWE could do is maybe have Cody send in a tape message for Dynamite's three-year anniversary coming up this Wednesday. You know, because Danielson, Jericho, and Big Show, like I said, sent in messages for John Cena. Why can't Cody send in one for AEW? I think Cody would be down to do that. Just appear on the video wall during the show. What's up, guys? Cody Rhodes here. Just wanted to say hello and uh, tell you that I miss everybody in my AEW family. And congratulations on three great years. And keep kicking ass. And you'll always be my home. And best of luck to you. Something like that. Maybe I'm being a little bit too optimistic. Maybe... 
the idea of these two companies being at complete peace with each other is a little bit too much to ask for, but I really think it would benefit everybody, both companies and the fans. And that's why whenever a situation like this comes up, if the, both companies can look at the situation and say, okay, number one, it's not going to harm either one of us, and it's going to benefit both of us, and it will also benefit the fans, I think you should always say yes in that situation. Now, like I said, I understand that you're never going to have a situation where Roman Reigns is on Dynamite and you have John Moxley on Raw or something like that. Big stars and a big working agreement and a forbidden door pay-per-view between these two companies is probably never going to happen. But small little things I think would be really fun for the audience, especially these days when tribalism is at its all-time peak. The tribal ass monkeys who are obsessed with hating whichever company they've decided to hate are ruining wrestling. And I think it would be great if WWE and AEW can kind of come together from time to time to maybe alleviate some of that pressure and show the fans, hey, look, you don't have to be assholes to each other. It's okay. You can be competitors while acknowledging the other's existence and maybe helping the other out if it benefits you. And I think if that situation comes up, as long as it's not too one-sided, if WWE phones up AEW and says, hey, Tony Khan, can we use Billy Gunn for Raw? And TK's like, yeah, sure, you can have Billy, but I'll tell you what, in exchange, send me the bloodline to use on Dynamite. Obviously, that's not going to happen. But I think if you look at a specific situation and neither company, you know, is harmed or one upped by the other and it benefits both. And most of all, it benefits us. Like I said, I think you always say yes in that situation. And I'm just hoping that some of the contract tampering stuff that was going on hasn't damaged the relationship between these two companies too badly because I think that's really fucked up that WWE did that that sent feelers out to talent because that can really damage and that can really piss off Tony Khan to where he's not going to be willing to do any favors and maybe vice versa so I think between these two companies it's great to be competitive I love the little shots they take at each other on the shows it does not bother me at all one bit I don't think any fans should be bothered by what anybody says because we have seen nasty malicious competition before at least the older fans have the young fans have not so in, when Soraya says finally a boss who listens to me they act like it's the worst thing in the world I invite them to go back and watch Paul Heyman when he ran ECW Eric Bischoff when he ran WCW that will tell you all you need to know and give you all the proof in the world that the little pot shots we see between the two companies in today's day and age is nothing, nothing compared to what it used to be. And fans need to untangle them panties. It's all good. But what you don't want to see happen is some of that shady, sketchy shit going on behind the scenes, which WWE always does. Whether it's booking pay-per-views opposite AEW, Tony Khan was very pissed at Scrum Gate, at Brawl Out, because WWE ran Labor Day weekend after never running it ever decided to run it because they know that's AEW's weekend. They do little things behind the scenes to constantly stunt and stifle the growth of their competition. There's been decades of evidence of them doing this and examples of WWE exhibiting this type of behavior. And when you tie in the contract tampering stuff, that's fucked up. And I think that can do a lot of damage, you know, between these two companies in terms of their professionalism with each other. And it really, really hurts the fans in that respect. So as much as I'm happy that Vince is out and Triple H's regime has taken over, they need to cool their jets with their shit. Just concentrate on what they're doing, do what they're doing, because they're doing great things right now. There should be no reason for you to go around and try to deliberately or outwardly harm the other company and I don't think AEW should be doing that to WWE either so if you and plus when you think about how many people in the company have mutual friends and don't have any malice towards the company they used to work for I, I don't think Brian Danielson has anything against WWE they treated him fabulously you know so I think a lot of wrestlers too are kind of put in a tight spot you know I'm working for a company that wants to put my wife's company out of business you don't want that environment again in wrestling you know and I understand that you know maybe I'm just a fucking dumb Southern California hippie who wants too much peace and it's unrealistic but I really think that these two companies maintaining somewhat of a decent relationship will only benefit wrestling in the long run and little things like this Billy Gunn showing up on Raw to be a part of that celebration I think would be a good way way uh, to display that. So we will see if Billy Gunn shows up or not based on what's been going on in AEW lately and all the controversy there. In my heart of hearts, I don't see him appearing on the show, to be honest. I kind of don't think he'll be there. It is possible that maybe they will allow him 
to send in a video message. Maybe not being there in the flesh, but sending a video in might be more realistic just to avoid those scissor me daddy ass chants that WWE seems to be really worried about. Even though, even if Billy appears on the video wall, I still think you're going to get those chants. So we will see on October 10th, one week from today, probably as of the upload of this mic drop is when the 25th celebration will take place. And if we see any sort of WWE influence on Dynamite on Wednesday, like a taped message from Cody or somebody else to congratulate them on their three-year anniversary, that could be good evidence that we will see Billy just a few days later on Monday Night Raw. You guys let me know what you think. Thanks for listening. Catch you soon.